part two of the DRZ Hooligan mod. To start off with, you got to strip down the bike. And so, uh, no front, no rear. Uh, you're going to need a new chain for this mod, so take your chain off, that's a new chain. And then you're going to need to disconnect uh, your brake caliper uh, from the carrier. And all it is is two bolts maybe, or one bolt, I can't remember. I already have the new caliper on there, and I already have the new chain on there. Uh, other than that, uh, things that you got to do to the bike, uh, really nothing. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I've done uh, so far is chain and, and caliper carrier uh, before I move on to the rims themselves. So we'll start off here at the front, uh, and then we'll go ahead and I'll talk about it, uh, tell you everything I did, and then we'll go ahead and put it on. And then we'll do the same with the rear. So for the front build up, what you're going to need is a GS500 rim tire uh, combo or, you know, whatever. You're going to need, obviously, the rim. And as you can see on this side, uh, there's nothing to be had. So the only thing you're going to have to do to this side is put in a new bearing. So what you're going to want to do is, and you can get this at just about any home improvement store. Uh, it's just a big long, you don't need this long, but I just liked it. It was much easier to stand above it put it on the lip and knock it down, uh, is knock the bearings out. And so what you do is pretty much you kind of tilt it at an angle, slide it down in there, and it's going to catch a gonna catch a lip. All right, once it catches a lip, you're going to hit the top of this with a hammer. And usually uh, it's not going to be up on a workbench like this. Like I had mine out on the floor, but it's easier to, to show you the, the rim while it's up here. But you're going to knock it out, and what you're going to want to do is uh, kind of hit it a couple times on this side, a couple times on the complete opposite side, a couple times up top, a couple times down low, and just kind of keep working around in that, that cross motion uh, until you knock the bearing all the way out. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you just try and knock it through on one side, you could wedge that one side up and in and uh, have yourself a really big problem. So once you knock that bearing out, uh, you're going to knock out the other, or take out your, uh, there's going to be an internal sleeve in there, internal uh, uh, spacer, you're going to take that out, and then it's going to be really easy to knock out the other side bearing. Once you do that, you're going to take your new bearings that you bought, uh, that are in the first video, uh, put in a new bearing on this side. Alright, once you got that bearing in, you're going to flip it over, and that's pretty simple, you can look up videos on YouTube about how to put bearings in or knock them out if you're not too sure. Uh, that's how I learned how to do it. Next thing you're gonna do, you're not gonna have a rotor or this big girl on here. Uh, so essentially you're just gonna have uh, just on the other side of this. And what you're gonna wanna do is, and I'm not gonna take this all the way apart, uh, but you're going to, uh, you have to have uh, those longer internal spacers. And I'll have the part number for that that I showed in the very first video. And you're gonna cut that down to the GS500 size because those are for Jixer rims. You're gonna cut those down to the stock size. That's easiest uh, measuring how long the the one that you pulled out, measuring it, uh, marking it down uh, on the uh, the Jixer one uh, a couple times, and then cutting. And the easiest way to cut it, I found for me with limited tools, uh, was a uh, angle grinder. That was probably with just a, a like a four inch cutoff disc angle grinder. So once you get that cut. You're going to then put it in there. I put a little bit of grease on it. And then once you get that in there, you're going to put the bearing on this side. And so that's as simple as that. Uh, once you do that, uh, I went ahead and did something different uh, than how it was in the very first video. Uh, instead of going with the uh, Green Pond Moto bracket, which I do have, uh, I just bought it all uh, at different times before I'd ever even started the project. Uh, and then realized that I'm not going to use it anymore. I went ahead and had this uh, custom little hub adapter, rotor adapter, uh, made. And that way I can run. This is the the DRZ400S stock uh, rotor uh, off my S rims. And so I took it to a local machine shop, and I had them custom make it off of some of the dimensions I had, uh, so that it bolted up here to the GS500 rim and here to the rotor. So I can run. Uh, any DRZ400S pattern uh, rotor, or if I have uh, uh, the, the the 320 or the 310, whatever it is, uh, big brake setup. If I want to move to that, I can 
still run uh, that on here. I just have to get that small adapter that you can buy off of, you know, EBC or, or wherever you get them from. Anyway, so I had that made, and I'll show you uh, whenever I go to put it on uh, the bike how I uh, got the dimensions for this. Because this is as simple as I gave them the dimensions, uh, gave them the rotor and the wheel, and then they uh, built everything around it, and it works flawlessly. So after you've gotten both your bearings and your internal spacer, so don't forget to put that in there before you put the other bearing, uh, you then have that made, attach that, attach whatever rotor you're using on, and you're good to go. Otherwise, you can use a non-offset GS500 uh, rotor or whatever pattern rotor uh, you have, that, 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 or whatever rotor you have that works with the GS500 pattern. And then you're going to need the Green Pond Moto uh, uh, bracket. I don't think they're open anymore, so this might be the better way to go because you can get a local machine shop to make this for you uh, for around the same price. I think mine was $125. And so, I mean, it was like $25 more than uh, the Green Pond Moto bracket. Uh, but it was really well, really well made. And, uh, you know, the guys uh, who made it for me, uh, did a really good job so take it to uh, a highly recommended local machine shop near you and i'm sure they can do it really really quick and really easy so to put it on since you don't have to do anything with the brake all you gotta do is move it over here all right so how i did the measurements uh for the spacers because i measured from the inside here got a total distance wrote that down measured how wide the the rim itself is so from this face to the the face over here the actual rim itself not the uh, rotor adapter or the rotor and then what i did was i measured how deep in here uh, the bearings were inset so from here to the face and from the inside bearing to the to the to the rotor face and what that lets me know is is how far these are going to need to be and what I realized was the stock uh, S adapter or S, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, spacer works perfectly on this side. So what I did was obviously use this. And then from there, I already knew what size the other, uh, what size spacer I was going to need. So I took some one inch black pipe. And I cut it using the same method I used to cut the spacers, just a four inch uh, angle grinder. Cut it off real nice, made this nice little spacer, and voila, I got two spacers for the front. All right. So now that you know how to get the spacers, you're also going to know how to uh, make this adapter. So what I did was after I got the spacers cut, I put the wheel and centered it up on there. I then took this rotor, which is the rotor I was going to use, and placed it inside of uh, the caliper, where roughly it should be, and then I locked the front brake uh, with a ratchet strap or uh, with a with a Irwin vice clamp. You can use whatever as long as it holds that brake rotor uh, in the caliper without you having to do it, or you can have a friend or somebody else hold it. For me, I was by myself, so that's I used what I what I could. Uh, from there, I then measured from the front of this lip face to this rotor, to the back side of this rotor, and I got roughly 12 mils. Uh, yours will probably be different, so make sure you do your own measuring because my caliper could be uh, slightly off from yours or uh, different factors could vary in. So uh, that's why I'm not getting any kind of spacer links or anything. But anyways... Uh, I then took that measurement, which was, you know, roughly 12 mils. I then took the rim and the rotor and gave it to them, told them it needed to be this thick, and it, it came back uh, absolutely beautiful. So once you do that and you get this piece back, get it bolted on, bolt your rotor on, whatever you're using. And then what you're going to want to do is take your axle, kind of lay it in like that, take your spacer, and slide it in just like so. All right, now you're gonna take your rim, you're gonna slide it in there nice and carefully. And actually, I find this easiest to, to sit down on the floor with it. 
lift it up with your legs and then kind of jimmy your your uh, thing in there all right now it's just kind of a, a dancing game and I know it's probably really hard to see it's really hard to see for me uh, just kind of get your your rotor in there and that's weird oh there we go there we go all right now once you get that over here then you're gonna take your your spacer for this side kind of oops the thing is you got to pay attention to your brakes back here so they don't your your rotors in there uh, take your spacer and it's gonna want to be a pain in the butt that's just how it is and so just kind of fiddle with it it doesn't take much force so if you find yourself trying to force it in there like this uh, it's probably just not the right angle but it will fit in there nice and neatly you just gotta get the, the rim at the proper angle and get everything kind of lined up all all nice and proper just kind of combination of and there you go. See, didn't take much force. You just had to find the right angle in which to to put your uh, spacer in. And what you're going to want to do is make sure everything's lined up nice and straight. It might not want to go in at first because your fork tubes or something might not be lined up correctly. Your wheel might not be up high enough because it all matter see there we go now it's going in nice and easy oh i don't know why i just tried that what i use is a for these axles is a hammer and just a little block of wood and what that does is allows you to kind of tap it in there nice and neatly without breaking anything because this is a soft soft piece of, of wood just right so once you do that you're then obviously going to want to get some thread locker uh, right here I got some medium strength put some thread locker on there I'm not gonna go through that right there because obviously pretty easy uh, grab your washer and nut place it on there screw it down with your fingers at first uh, take your torque wrench, and I don't remember exactly what Suzuki's uh, torque spec on it is, but torque it down to Suzuki spec. And voila, uh, your front is done.